Yeah, no, it says we're streaming to the right place. There we go. Hold on a second here. There we go. Okay, the, cool. It's working. All right, so that's why. And I'm ready to roll. Okay. All good. So sorry for the wait. I was just waiting to... I was sending the transmission, and I was just uh, waiting for it to appear. So what I'll do now is I'll pause the video, pop out the chat window just to save me some bandwidth so that I'm not getting the, uh, the video feed back to me. There we go. Good. Okay, so let's start off with Marley. I'm going to do a couple warm-up songs just to get things rolling. I'm turning on the chorus pedal. Hello, hello.
right, so that was Marley from my second album. All right, so let's go through some of these here. We've got some questions popping in. Uh, how you doing, Jamie, Billy, Weston, Tyler, Dimitri, Javier, Sean, Winter by the Sea, I'll play that a bit later. Jamie Layton, how's it going? Long time. William saw you in Eugene. Yeah, I remember that. That was a fun night. Um, all right, so when it comes to requests, um, so like certain sh uh, songs I haven't done for a long time, so I've got quite a few out there. So if some of them are like repeatedly requested, but it's not performance ready, what I could do, and I've been doing this lately, is I devote a Twitch practice stream to it. So I'll just pull up the song and just kind of learn all the bits live on Twitch and just kind of explain how it comes back into my memory and all that. Let's see what we got here. Andy, what do I hear from the headphone? Just my own, I'm just monitoring my own playing as well as later I'll have some backing tracks for acoustic metal and I can hear that too. William De Silva, what kind of music and theory schooling did you take? I did uh, classical guitar lessons for about six or seven years with a guy named Alvin Tung, at uh, a doctor of music at University of Toronto. Theory schooling, not a lot. I mean, a bit of four-part harmony and like just basic, I guess they call it Barbara Warm's Elementary Rudiments. I did that book and then some theory and, uh, and sorry, some harmony and history after that, but not tons. Um, Curtis, Steve I. Is that the real Steve I, or are you an imposter, sir? <laughs> Calvis Superman. I'm just reading off some names here. Curtis. Pepe, headphones for the metronome. Yep, yeah, good idea for recording. Uh, Alan, Winter by the Sea. Yeah, I'll do that later. I gotta warm up, you know, unleash a few songs, get comfortable. It's always the first, first couple that you gotta, uh, you know, settle into. Barbara, how you doing? Chris. Richard Barioni, best friend. I actually practiced that, believe it or not. On my previous stream, I didn't have it ready. I think I could do it. I did a Twitch stream on it. Level 40, have not practiced uh, that one. Cream Dog, there's no uh, backing track for it. And this is from, we'll just call him Rector, because I don't know how to pronounce the first part. Yeah, I don't have that one ready. The seven string stuff, haven't really done it in a while, but I can twitch some of it. I've done a little bit to sort of bring it back because I haven't been doing seven string lately. Um, Pepe, you've never considered a song performance ready? Yeah, I mean, is this just a mental block? Pretty much. I mean, you just, you, you just go through it and then trip a few times and then just keep doing it. And then I think you get a control over the anxiety. So even if you do trip up, you don't necessarily condemn yourself on the spot. That's the idea. And so it takes a few, you have to be willing to look like a fool first, you know, and even look like a fool in trying. And then that sort of, you, you iron that out over time. And then it doesn't emotionally affect you as much anymore. That's how that goes. Can you post a link? Yes, it's in the video description, uh, channel 42069, the uh, Twitch link. Warden Woods, Nicholas, yes. Blood and Ice, I could do some of it. Um, Russian questions. I do not have access to. Maybe Google Translate that. No, I don't play Joe Satriani. Eugene, hello, Brazil. Lucas, what's up? Having a good day. Kazakhstan, all right. From far away. Okay, so I'm going to do another one here. One moment. i got to turn off the chorus pedal to tune properly. <laughs> I put a door stopper underneath my tuner to put it on an angle. You know those things that you slide underneath the door? It's a good idea. Otherwise, I'd have to stand up to see this. All right. Let's do Wash Away. I haven't had that one. Uh, practiced El Marto Little Angels yes yeah, it's, it's a fun tune I'll do that a bit later so let's see here <laughs>
away nylon string version hello Billy Jana or did I pronounce that right I don't know we need a, a Google search for proper translation so that I can head up on the fly put on Latin play time too yes that will come eventually um, just going through some uh, some of these I scroll back and check out the comments if there's anything I can address in her dark den dance devils yeah I'll do that a bit later when I switch up guitars Suta Rooney asks, hello from the Netherlands. Hello from Canada, Eastern Canada, more specifically. Ice went to rock. Hmm, haven't done that in a while. Would you accept a couple of riffs from it? Just kind of chopped together. And then if it falls off, and if it falls off the rails, I'll just um, tie it up really quickly and pretend that's how it's supposed to go. Um, just reading through here, okay. Yeah, Eon Clanens. What is he currently playing, guys? That was Wash Away from my second album, with Candy Rat, Ewan Dobson 2. Just reading through your Free Spirit or Feathers and Snow. You know what I'll do, Mark? Andre, I'll do a Twitch stream on Feathers and Snow because I couldn't do the whole thing right now, but I'll do a, um, a Twitch stream. I know your pain I can do later. I do it on the other guitar, though. This is my open... I guess open C sharp major or C sharp minor and to be more specific open D tuning down a semitone that's what I've done with here uh, with this guitar open C sharp major um, Weston sweet uh, thanks for sharing your bird experiences yeah no problem that's been uh, that's been something I'm still working on the pileated woodpecker it's uh it's not the friendliest of birds I think it's the it's one of the more shy ones it doesn't like to hang around other birds or people but we'll we'll break through eventually hey Matt how you doing all right so one thing I get asked about sometimes is to play motion potion and this will be another one of the warm-up uh, another one of my little warm-up pieces um I use an acoustic glide I bought this at the 12th fret in Toronto a number of years ago and uh, I switched to nylon string I'll explain more about that later but I used to use these steel finger picks and I'll show them to the camera after this uh, song. But I stopped uh, using them because I guess the, 
the speed at which I was using them and then the aggress the aggressiveness of the attack, what that led to was just some discomfort. I mean, one time I was doing a show, uh, I think it was in 2016, 2017, 2016, and my third finger wasn't moving. And I think I just kind of got inflammation along a tendon. And uh, that was from, I guess, the snapping motion of the steel on steel or the metal on steel. <laughs> And it's sort of uh, what happens is the shock absorption travels up the finger into the tendon or whatever. So uh, I just grew up my nails and relearned a lot of my stuff on nylon string. So normally you don't use a, a slide for nylon. Listen. It works. It's a little noisy on the, on the, on the bass strings. But, you know, what can you do? Let's try Motion Potion. potion all right so let me get out some of these out. see these are the finger picks that I used to use now let me just pull up the uh, monitor screen so I can see what I'm doing here hold on and I'll move the mic out of the way so I don't breathe into it too heavy Whoop. there So those are the uh, the finger picks that I used to use, and that was like the sound that I used to work with. Um, but uh, if you use them too much, with too, I guess with too much force and whatever, it, for some people it can cause injury. So for example, those of you that know of Leo Kotke, that's uh, his story was similar, like with the the finger picks leading to um, uh, a necessary change of style. So that's what happened to me. Eventually, I was like, well, you know, and it was actually a good thing because it forced me to like expand and play other things and go back to my classical training and so forth. And it was uh, overall, overall a good transition for, the, from, for me anyway. 
So now I'm going to change over to my other guitar and I'm going to turn off the, uh, I'm just going to mute my video and audio for one sec, just so it doesn't, you know, when I move these mics all shake and stuff. So one second, I'll be right back. I just need to switch up guitars. All right. One moment. There we go, let me just tune up now. Oh wait, gotta turn that off, hold on. Put on a little bit of octave pedal just to get some. All right. Pull up the chat window again, see if anyone's saying anything. Answer a couple questions before I go on. Surf Zombie 2, what do they call that tube on your finger? That's called a slide. And particularly, the brand is called Acoustaglide. Geraldo, hello Brazil. Legend of the Brown Goat, yes, we can do that. I just need to go through a couple more, but yes. Hot lunch, we have another Dobson in the house. We may be related. Enemies Nemesis, how you doing? He's from, he's from Twitch, I remember that name. Um, we're gonna, what kind of guitar is this? This is a Godin Multiac Duet Ambiance nylon string. And so I, I prefer it for live use, like I'll, for recording in the studio, I'll, I'll use like maybe an actual, like I guess a, a full acoustic nylon classical string, but for live use, I find this is quite, uh, it does the job quite nicely, it's excellent. It's easy to travel with too. And the new seven string guitar did not come today. UPS is delayed and I have to wait till Monday. So that's how that went yesterday. I was waiting till like seven o'clock and then I called UPS and they're like, well, it could come up to eight o'clock, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't get your hopes up or anything. So I'm like, wait till eight o'clock and nothing. So I'm like, all right, forget you. Let's bring you back to life. How did you know? How did you know that was what I was going to play? So that is just another new -ian? Is that the how you pronounce that? I'll have to look that up after. Okay.
we go. I should turn down the octave pedal a little bit. It was a little too present. But it helps just to have like a little touch of it in the bottom for the low end. Let's turn that down a little bit. One more. And I'll tune up to open C minor. Let's go in here. What do we got? Great to hear you of Leo Kotke. Ever heard of Hayseed Suede? Uh, no, I haven't heard that. Clarence, I haven't heard that one. Scenic Curve. Time 2 will come a bit later. What string action do you prefer on, on nylon string? I mean, the best negotiation between, you know, easy to play, but also so you can put some, some power into it without it buzzing back. So I would, that's considered a classical setup as opposed to a flamenco setup. Flamenco sw uh, setup is more like low action with a bit of buzz because they, they use that buzz as part of like the rhythmic attack. So I prefer closer to a classical setup. Um, going through to zoom. Hello, Brazil, Geraldo, Severo. How do you determine which alternate tuning you decide to use when writing? I just started with Open C and worked from that as well as Open D because those were the general ones. And when I got into finger style, it was because of Leo Kotke. So I just picked Open C, which is what he uses in a number of them. But he just uses Open C down like a tone or two tones and a half or something. He does a super low version of low C. You know, technically, I guess it might be Open A in some cases, maybe Open B. But um, same interval uh, structure of the tuning itself um where am i from canada i'm in new brunswick right now hot lunch 4011 new brunswick i live in the country that's why the the stream quality isn't high definition and it's because um i have a limited upload stream when you get internet in the country um well where i live it's basically a seven megabit dsl so you get like seven or eight hundred kilobytes down 70 or 80 kilobytes up and so the, the deal with that is uh obviously it's going to limit how many the, the bit rate i use when doing streaming how far do you have your strings up would you consider it a bigger gap than normal um how far do you have your strings up do you mean the gap between the strings if that's the case then i think this is traditional classical spacing i think it's nut width is like two inches i think that's what that's what that would indicate two inch nut width or 1.9, but I think, I'm pretty sure this is two. I think so anyway. Um, any quick tips on posture and holding the guitar? I'm trying to adjust my form for ergonomics. Chris Dijon will see, because I have long legs, I have this high bar stool, and then I have this um, quite a high foot stool. It's actually a small table that I bought, a, I bought it at a garage sale down the road. And so high chair, high foot stool, I prefer, um, I guess a, a fo I prefer a foot rest for my left leg for this sort of thing. And relaxation is important. I mean, you work that out f through the first few pieces you play. Talk, kind of let it go. Let some of the adrenaline pass through your system. And then you just kind of chill out. If you can. So relaxation being the goal. Um, Chris DeJong in terms of posture and holding it. Yeah, I mean, straight back is good. But I mean, when you're playing, you're going to be moving around. And you might get into a position where you're leaning and then you might remember it when you're playing and go oh yeah and then straighten up and then sludge back down at some point and so that sort of thing might happen ben r happy belated birthday thank you what was the first full song i learned well probably crazy train well no no, no probably something like twinkle twinkle little star you want to go way back but i mean like first full song <laughs> Like when I was eight, like playing the, the one-liners out of the book just to learn how to read music. All right, so I'm just, uh, guitar is, is my guitar broken because it didn't sound anything like yours? Oh, uh, well, hope not. That would be unfortunate. All right, so let's continue. <laughs> What does it sound like with the octave pedal? This is a TC Electronics sub and up octave pedal. And 
I find you put just a little bit in the mix. There's other, there's other guys that do this too. It just gives it a nice low end kind of touch when you're plugged in. I'm going to try a song called In Her Dark Den, Dance Devils. move this a little bit because the sound actually comes out of this area more than down there. Quick tune up. T. Janth, My Nightmare, yes. That's in the same tuning as it, so it's easy for me to for me to play that. Surf Zombie 2, where's the best place to buy our music? For Candy Rat releases from Candy Rat and otherwise, just through my website, if you go to the store, I think um, CD Baby used to offer them directly, but then they basically stopped their store. So anywhere really, I guess Amazon, that's the only place that really, uh, the easiest place anyway. <clears throat> what do we got here? Which of your songs do you find most difficult? I mean, ones that I used to be inspired to play that required a lot of practice. This is Kenneth asking the question, Kenneth Cross. So songs become difficult when you're outside the window of practicing them and bringing them up to level. You know, it's kind of like a stove. You've got four rings. You can only put so much on it. So, I mean, whatever songs I have cooking up that are ready to play, I mean, the difficult ones are the ones over here that are, like, not cooking. Uh, especially if they're if they're, you know, they're technically challenging, some Pagani, like I can do the 24th Caprice now, I've been practicing that, but the 5th, haven't played in a long time. So that's difficult now because I don't, you know, know it as well as I did. Fragments of it are still in my mind, but not overall. So yeah, the ones that are most difficult are the ones that are uh, not, not cooking presently, especially if they require like a certain type of energy or pep that comes from like a previous chapter in your life. It's sort of like if you were really excited about... Uh, you know, like when you're inspired to play a certain song, you're excited about it. That excitement and the love for it in the moment is an energy that kind of carries the, it carries you and it gives you the energy to play the song. Outside of that, it can be more difficult to summon this, uh, this energy to play it. It's not impossible, but I mean, that's one of the, one of the elements that can make it a little more difficult to do. Um, Houdentain. <laughs> Which has longer tuning life, steel or nylon? Tuning life? Probably steel. I mean, why is it so? Well, nylon's, uh, nylon bounces around tunings uh, when the strings are new. But if they're too old, then the intonation starts to go out because of the, I guess, the warping in them or whatever. All of the, the grooves or whatever. I know your pain yet. Yeah, we can do that. 
that's not a problem. Inspiration for people in Brazil, Julio, glad to, glad to hear it. And Tony Haven is cooking some dinner. Enjoy. Uh, internal microphones for guitar, uh, a Russian name, I can't pronounce those quite well. Mm, have I tried them? Yes. Uh, for a classical guitar, I gen if it's just a full acoustic guitar, I prefer just a mic. The problem with a lot of some of the internal microphones is I found that they favor the trebles or the basses, one or the other more than the other, unless it's a blend system. But I've had guitars where if you blend too much one way, too much the other, it kind of it's one or the other. Either the trebles are clear, or the um, or the basses are clear, something like that. What kind of headphones? These are. Hold on, what are these? I don't know. They're brown headphones. I don't know. I don't know what they are, but they're good. You can have two sources at the same time. So I got one in here, but if I wanted to get like another audio source, I could plug it in the other ear and blend them. That, that's what I do know about them. Other than the fact that they're brown. Dancing with her 2010. Can I play the one? Um, it's in the other tuning. We'll, if I don't do it today, we'll do it on Twitch. Blood and ice. Smoke grass. Nah, makes me anxious. Not my thing, but knock yourself out. Do I like metal? If so, which bands? This is Andrea Oliani. Uh, I used to listen to Children of Bottom in Flames. When I was really young, like I mean, from the ages of like 11 to 20, there's, uh, I guess it was Metallica, Megadeth, White Zombie, Sepultura. Who else did I? I've seen all these bands. Carcass, Saw Cannibal Corpse. I used to, but I don't listen to metal presently. I don't listen to metal presently. I listen to Scarlatti right now. I have the complete works on my MP3 player. How many hours do you practice in a day? Well, on and off, you know, half an hour to an hour, a bit of a break, half an hour, an hour break. Sometimes a couple hours, sometimes eight hours. And if I have lots of uh, outside yard work to do, I mean, sometimes like half an hour. Like I'll do a bunch of work outside, come in and be like, whoa, I got to put in a half hour before uh, we have a full day without playing. Studio quality internal mics. Why well, we could try it. Um, um, I'm not sure how to read that name. Sapera. That's probably not how you pronounce it, but that's how I would read it if I didn't know how to pronounce it. You could send uh, an email through my website. Maybe I could check it out. But we'll see how that goes. Um, Italy. How you doing, Italy? Yes, I saw Mustaine and Friedman live a few times. In the in the glory days. Okay. <laughs> So what we're going to do now, oh, Fulvio, do I no longer compose for classical guitar? Well, uh, I guess not right now, but I, don't, I wouldn't say that that's a state of permanence because I do like to go, to go back to that. I don't know what a meme song is, Antonio. What's a meme song? I'm, I'm behind the times, you know, I live in the forest. How do I keep myself motivated? Hmm. Um, I think I just accept when I'm not motivated. <laughs> and practice anyway and go, ah, oh, well, maybe I don't need to feel that way to do this and do it anyway. What are you doing with those birds? Feeding them by hand. And that's Pataki Gabor. I'm feeding them by hand. It is a, it is a joy of mine. All right, so let's do a song called Plum and Pear. And then we'll start going. And then I want to do Little Angels. Dreaming in Dortmund, then I can do, you know, uh, what is it? You know, a couple of the other ones. All right. Let me just turn up the volume on this. Cool. Here we go. Um, MM, never used a Chapman stick. No, I didn't. Here we go. This is um, Plum and Pear. Thank you. 
Rose Plum and Pear, for those of you that want to know the, the, the name. <clears throat> All right, so let's go up here, because this, uh, this is flying off while I'm playing here. And if I start looking at what I'm playing, I'll, I'll forget what I'm doing, because then I'll start reading, and then the other part of my brain kicks in, and then I see the part of my brain that's playing guitar and then reading, and I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. And, it's, and then the train goes off the tracks, and you know how it is. Ricardo, have I played Via Lobos? Yes, Etude 1, Etude 11, Prelude 1, Prelude 4. Is that right? Yes. Prelude 1, Prelude 4, Etude 11, Etude 1. That's it, though. That's, a, that's all I did for Via Lobos, but I can't play it now. I haven't practiced that in a long time. Who are my guitar heroes? Oh, I had lots. Marty Friedman, Paul Gilbert. Oh, I used to, I saw Steve I a couple times, Joe Satriani. You know, and then I guess in the late 90s, was it? Early 2000s, there was a new wave of shredders that, was, that came out. I listened to some of them. Who were they? If I recall correctly, George Bellis. I was listening. I also liked Michelangelo as well. All sorts. Okay, I could do a whole 10 minute, 20 minute talk about that. Favorite song to play. Hard to say. I mean, I have favorites. Uh, this is Joshua Thompson. What's your favorite song to play? I have different styles of songs. So my favorite classical stuff might be some Scarlatti. Favorite finger style might be like Little Angels, but it changes, though, right? Because I'll play them so much, and then I'll lose that feeling of, you know, yeah, I'm having a great time playing this, right? It's kind of like if you read the same story enough times, you may not be as excited about reading it again. Um, anything else? Scrolling down. A riff or two of something you might be working on. Oh, okay. This is Hey There, Mogwai. Um... <laughs> That's something I'm working on. As you can see, it's not hasn't taken full form yet. Mega Man 2, DB47. Uh, have I committed myself to music and birds? I guess I have, haven't I? The pictures prove it, don't they? What's the model of guitar you're playing right now from Picture of a City? This is a Godin multi act nylon string. Specifically, the model is a duet ambiance. And I'm also getting a, a Golden multi ax 7-string. I would have had it today, but UPS is, you know, bogged down at the, at the time, for the time being, we'll say. Have I ever listened to Sean Lane, Dee Dee says? Uh, a bit, but he wasn't one of the main ones I listened to, but I definitely know about him, and all the electric guitar fans definitely do. Music and birds sound like a good life to me. Yeah, I know the birds are really, uh, that's a lot of fun. If you want to see that, there's links in the description if you want to find it about the bird experience and the bird feeding that I've been doing. I wrote a book on it, and so you can find the link in the description. Improvise. Uh, well, I sort of did a minute ago, but I kind of like to practice what I'm going to play. Um, do I plan to play live regularly? Well, streaming? Yeah, I've been doing that on Twitch as well. So, yes. Wall of Man. Favorite, favorite bird? Pileated Woodpecker. Enemy's Nemesis. P uh, Pileated Woodpecker. Definitely a favorite of mine. They're difficult to get close to, though. They're really, uh, well, it depends, though. I mean, some of them, are, like, the ones around here are. And one of the reasons is that the trees are, around here are very ideal for woodpeckers. There's a lot of insects in them, so all year round they can uh, sustain themselves, which is why they don't go to feeders very often. So that's added to the challenge of my dream of wanting to feed one. Okay, so Steve, when I'm writing something, do I think of it in terms of the technique or just the flow of the music? I just kind of go with the riff. Um, the technique would come in, for example, if I ha if I hear a melody in my head that I want to translate to guitar, but it doesn't necessarily fit the fingers well, and that's where you have to practice it because you know sometimes you're writing something, then the melody that, the melody that you want to play doesn't necessarily fit the fingers very well. It requires like arranging it specifically, certain left hand, right hand fingering, position shifting and so forth. And that's where you kind of have to do the work to fit it into place. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, I was thinking of playing um, Dreaming in Dortmund. 
because I've been working that up to playable levels. <laughs> Let's try that one out and then we'll keep on chatting and stuff in between. Sorry if I talk fast, but that's how I, I address all these you know, questions. I have to sort of be motor mouth and, you know, approach it like that. Do I, look, do I like Celtic folk? Yeah, I think I do, yeah. But I mean, I wouldn't say I'm an expert in the matter. All right, here we go. Dreaming in Dortmund. octave pedal. There you go. Uh, Dreamy and Norman from my second album. One second, let me turn up this mic and get a swig of water so you don't hear the, the sound of me drinking water. Although you might get it through this mic here. I'll try and keep it down. There we go. 
Much better. Turn this back on. So let's go through a couple of questions again. Can I play Mario World game? Not the soundtrack, which is what I think you're getting at. Although I have played the game previously. Hey there, Storm. Yeah, I'd like to go to Brazil too, but that's been uh, you know, that's a booking challenge, you might say. My brother just bought his first guitar. Can you give a tip? Well, that's a tough one. I mean, find find the music you want to play and aim at that. And then don't be worried about playing simple stuff. Uh, it's normal. Don't try to rush ahead. And don't be too eager to play advanced things uh, right out of the gate. Okay, going down. Danut, man, I thought it was at two. Well, it actually was at two for me uh, because of the time zone I'm in. I'm in Atlantic time, so it was at two for me. I don't know, maybe you... Uh, who knows? Broken telephone got you? Not quite sure. DB47, no. Dr uh, Dreaming in Dortmund was from you and Dobson, too. Were you thinking of playing Through the Roof again at some point? Okay, yeah, I think I could probably do that. Not Jackie Chan. Hello from Russia. Hello. Marley, uh, Danit says Marley. Did that at the beginning, so when this uh, is done, just go back to that. I mean, sorry, um, just view this video afterwards and go to the beginning. Do you do gym? Well, no, I'm not like a, I'm not like one of those beefcakes that kind of goes regularly and you know eats you know the whole jug of protein powder. But I do you know try to keep up some running and I got a pull up bar out back, do some push ups and stuff, right? But I haven't graduated into the beefcake department. Just so you know, have you heard of the music of Greg Joy? No. Um, is it true that Mega Man inspired my level five? Justin, yeah, I would say it did. I think because the just the way that it has the little rhythms going, and then the melodies that are in thirds on top, that yeah, I would say yes. Thank you for the thank you for the window into your head through these awesome melodies and rhythms. No problem. Hello from India. Hello. Oh, okay, gotcha. Denut man is Oni Washinobi. Gotcha. <laughs> Okay, let's do that. Let's do lo let's do a lovely light. Shall we? All right, let's do that. Let's do a lovely light. Let me just move this footstool here. I'm sliding it away. Okay. Am I doing any work not related to music? Kirsten. Well, I mean, I, I did some gardening. So, I mean, that's that sort of work. I actually harvested some squash uh, yesterday. F uh, six butternut squash and three spaghetti squash. A few are finishing. And I actually ate my own spaghetti squash today. And I do lots of yard work. And... Uh, you know, maintenance work and so forth. So I do actually do work that isn't related to music. Okay. Let me just thank you for a second, realign my thoughts.
was a lovely light. Let me just, um, the bass string fell down a little bit. All right, so uh, not Jackie Chan asked for um, Through the Root. Haven't played it in a couple of days, but let's just see how it goes. Move that a little bit there. Let me just, what's that wonder if, um... I think I'm able to do some of it anyway. Are the leaves changing color up in New Brunswick? Yep, no, they are. I'm seeing it. It's going on. And Janice, Janet Zielinski, did you ever use a slide on guitar? Yes. So at the end of the stream, you can rewind it, and you'll see me using a bit of it on a nylon string. Nicholas, I'm more of a, I was more inspired by Leo Kotke. Like the finger style guys, I think in the candy rat realm, is generally, generally speaking, not absolutely, Michael Hedges um, derived inspiration, Tommy Emanuel inspiration, um, and Chet Atkins. Those are the three, you know, there's others, but I mean, those I, I can sort of generalize and those three are tend to be the, you know, the, the players kind of erupt from those different schools. I was more inspired to go and to get to get into fingerstyle by Leo Kotke. He was the first one I heard. Where I was like, oh, I might be able to actually use the, the classical playing knowledge or technique that I have to go in that direction. Um, yes, I played Dreaming in Dortmund, the box. I did earlier. Yeah, I guess I am endorsed by Godin, William De Silva. Yeah, because they give, they give them to me at, you know, artist endorsement uh, price, so I guess so, yeah. Evertune. Don't know what that is, but I'll look into it. Have you played music to the birds? No, I haven't. I think they're super sensitive. Right? So you got to be very still. Sounds that are um, they're not used sounds that they aren't used to will scare them away watermelon uh, maybe on nylon string Craig Harrison can I play watermelon by Leo I used to play 12 string not anymore because of the uh, the finger pick issue that I spoke about earlier okay <laughs> let's try through the roof for not Jackie Chan but no guarantees on it I just gotta remember that one part um How's it go again? Let's try it.
There we go. The uh, through through the roof nylon version. They actually uh, it was requested at a previous live stream and I didn't do it on the first one, uh, but then I started twitching it. That's what they call it, twitching. Yeah, I was twitching it. I've never used that adjective before. That's how it's used, twitching it. Yes, I was twitching it on a Twitch stream. <laughs> All right, so let's go through a couple more. How often do I do lives? I have a schedule. No, this is scenic nerf. Um, when it comes to doing lives, I just kind of, depending on how I'm feeling in the evening, I'll just think, oh, I'm practicing this piece. Okay, let's, you know, what I'll do is I'll stream a practice session, you know, and sometimes it's of a piece that I haven't played in a while, so I'll start it up, play it slowly, you know, and it's, by the end of the, of the session, I will have brought it together to a certain, to a certain degree. And then so people, people can see how I... Uh, you know, pull pieces up out of the muck, so to speak, right? Um, Fall of Man is played on a seven string. Yes, Frank. Do I listen to Leo Kotke? Yeah, actually, I have a couple songs in my MP3 player, now that I think of it. Stuff from the album Six and Twelve String Guitar. Um, yeah, no more hat in terms of, like, as a regular thing. I can only tolerate it for so long. So in some ways, I'm glad it's only for one song. Um, all the demons in my house have been slain. Glad to hear it. Okay, so that's not Jackie Chan throwing in another, another bit into the pot. Um, all, the de all the demons in my house have been slain. Excellent. And Weston Sweet, have to leave you now. Always great to see you live. If you were out touring, I'd be buying tickets. Good luck with the Paleo Woodpecker. Thank you very much. I mean, I've done every everything you could imagine one could do to try and summon a Paleo Woodpecker. I mean, I've done, I've done everything except for go down and try and talk to the medicine man about it. I mean, that's the last thing uh, I guess I'll have to do. I'm going to have to find one. All right, so. Some of your tunes remind me of classic video game music. Have you drawn inspiration from video games? Punches S. Yes, I would think so, but... It's sort of a chicken or the egg thing because video game composers, a lot of them were actually, as far as I can tell, based on what I'm hearing, like prog rock fans. So these Japanese composers, I'm pretty sure they had to have been listening to prog rock, something like that. And I think they were actually inspired by it. And then when you take that influence and you convert it into a MIDI, I think that's what video game music is. It's like prog rock, prog metal influence, 80s metal influence, and the chord progressions therein translated into a MIDI format. Something like that. Can I say something about the golden guitar? Yeah, it's great. Love it. Golden uh, multi-ac duet ambience. It's got a five-way blend switch and a couple EQ settings, so it's like a mixture of like a couple pickups. Patrick, will I be doing any concerts in New Brunswick? Possibly at a place called, oh, what's it called? Is it called yeah, the Tipsy Muse? Is that right? Yeah, Tipsy Muse. I played there earlier, maybe a month or two ago, and they're thinking of doing another, bring me back for another show. So I would, it's not um, carved in stone yet, but it's, it's a possible likelihood. Do I smoke cigarettes? No, used to. I mean, I went on and off of them, but glad to say that that's no longer occurring. Do I have a love song? Mm, no. No, I wouldn't say that I do, but maybe not Maybe not a romantic love song. You might say I have love in my songs. Some of them. Well, it depends. We can get into that discussion a bit deeper later. Do you ever pick up the electric guitar anymore, Craig Harrison? No, I don't pick it up anymore. Craig Harrison, no, wait, um, yeah, here. Michael Morrow, play some Leo Kaki. <laughs>
I can do it for that right now. <clears throat> uh, where do you, what do you have mutual with straw hats? Oh, that was, um, why do I have one? It's pretty much the, the story of the time to hat is pretty much someone I knew at the time in Toronto was going to the Canadian National Exhibition for some sort of flea market thing where they have all sorts of products from various nations. It's a huge exhibition. And I said to her, she said, do you want anything? And I said, and I said, well, I'm doing videos this week for you and Dobson too, because I just finished recording and then I'm going back into the studio to do the videos. So um, I said, because I'm all about getting cheaper costumes, right? Because if you try to get costumes for videos, you'll find out very quickly. I mean, you go to a costume store, you're like, how much is this? They're like, that's $2,000. Okay, never mind, forget this. So I'm like, forget it, we'll go to the karate store, we'll go to, and then so back to back up a little bit. She was going to this exhibition and she said, do you want anything? And I said, well, if they have a rice farmer's outfit, including the hat, grab that. Surely enough, for whatever reason, they had one, she brought it back, and then that's how I just decided to wear it for the Time 2 video, and then that happened. So that's pretty much the, uh, the story behind the hat. Somewhat random, right? Because I wanted to do costumes just for fun. But like I said, they're quite expensive, so they're the budget costumes, right? That's how that rolls. Budget costumes. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's all coming together now. It all makes sense now. I don't have intro, romance, and waltz ready. Um, something like that. Whatever. It's, it's there. It's in my brain somewhere, but I don't know it. The blue and orange background on screen is disaster outs. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. With the blue and orange? Or wasn't it like the green and the purple and yellow? That was the seizure one, wasn't it? Which is in black. I'll probably do a Twitch stream with some uh, seven string. I don't have a backing track for it. I played some of the uh, riffs from Witches in Black on Twitch. But, okay, so let me just look down here. Level 40. Uh, do I like anime? Pat Pataki Gabor. No, I can't say I do. I don't dislike it, but it doesn't draw me in. Um, blood and ice. When I switch to the steel string, like, uh, you know. I'll do it when I switch over to the steel string because it doesn't quite have the same effect. Hold on a second, taking a drink, turn the mic off. Good. All right, time for another song. I want to do a song called Little Angels and then country style etude and C and then we can do some acoustic metal. What is the action on that nylon string guitar? This one's actually in between, I would say it's probably a flamenco setup. Yeah, I would say it's probably like classical a little higher because you want to put power in it without it buzzing and you want to be able to go down to drop D. So this would technically be closer to uh, a um, yeah, flamenco action setup as opposed to classical. And I think I answered it already, but yes, do I like anime? And uh, no, so I don't dislike it, but it doesn't draw me in. Okay, so, Little Angels.
There we go, Little Angels. <clears throat> A song about feeding birds. And again, I have to temporarily mute the mic. Well, this one anyway. Okay. So, I want to do country style etude and then maybe some acoustic metal. Let me just tune up again here. I gotta turn off the octave pedal to do that. Oh, pretty good, staying in. Yeah, no, staying in. And let's uh, turn that down. Good. Oh, sorry about that. Try it again, a uh, little um, country style etude in C. That was a uh, country style etude in C. And the, the title was like, I wrote it. And then I was like, hmm, what does that sound like? And every title I came up with, like, not nah, too cheesy, uh, too this. And I'm like, you know what, forget it. it sounds like country, so let's call it country style etude in C. Now, what else, what else did I get a request for? Oh, I got a request for Brown Goat earlier. Legend of the Brown Goat. I should uh, probably look at that. One second here, let's go through some of these. P 
Can you try to order to uh, town theme from Heroes of Might and Magic 4? Yeah, no, I don't know that one. Seen at Kerf? I don't really I don't play that particular game. The only game I play is Unreal Tournament. The new one. Do I have classical repertoire? Yes. The only one I've been practicing lately, this is Woodpecker, uh, is Scarlatti K53. But if I'm going to play that live, I like to like, practice right up until it's time to play. Play that, do classical, and then switch. Because to go back to the classical guitar to pick it right up, I'd want to warm up a little bit to tra transition to the, you know, because the, the feel of the classical guitar is a bit different than this. Do I have to disguise myself to get the birds to eat from my hand? No, but I wear a bug jacket. But they've eaten from the hand with and without it. So, I mean, maybe some birds. Maybe it could be possible, but it's hard to say because ones that I thought, um, certain birds that I thought were, you know, would only eat if I was in disguise, meaning wearing the bug jacket, have done it without. And then I've also had it where ones that I thought were super shy, uh, super shy did it without the bug jacket, so not really. But if you consider a bug jacket that covers your face, but I, the hand is still there and they can, you know, they're pretty smart, they can tell in terms of, uh, they can usually look at something and say, that's probably a life form. Um, one second here. Could you spell my name when I'm screen recording it? Oh, right. So this guy wants to like record it and then show his friends. Okay. P-A-T-A-K-I-G-A-B-O-R. There you go. Um, one more second. All right. So what's that one I was going to do? I was going to do uh, Legend of the Brown Goat because someone asked for it earlier and I have... I did a Twitch stream where I practiced it for like an hour and a bit. Let's see here.
we go. That is uh, Legend of the Brown Goat for whoever requested that. Um, a couple more I'm just seeing here. Uh, comments. Yeah, I'm not sure who requested uh, Brown Goat. Punches S. These are actually my real fingernails. I don't like fake ones. See, the problem with fake nails and acrylics is that, you know, you wear them out. You got to get more put on. The problem is that they often, for acrylics, they have to, like, sand down the surface of your fingernail. And it makes it really thin. And then it just feels gross when they keep on, you know, um, shaving it down. It gets really thin, the top of your fingernail. And then with the fake nails, you've all, you always have to, if you, you know, if half of the nail loses its the stickiness of the glue, then you have to, like, rip it off, sand it down, glue another one. And I just don't like that. I don't like the feeling. I'll use them in emergency cases only. Uh, Matt P, do I have interest in playing shows in Germany? Well, sure, I've played a lot of shows in Germany, actually. I've driven all over Germany uh, a couple times on tour and enjoyed it, yeah. So, yes, but, I mean, all things considered, there's a few, you know, I mean, to, to actually arrange that might take a little bit. Because they usually book, like, a year in advance, right? Sometimes two years. Some venues book two years in advance, so I don't even, like, will I even be the same person in two years? I don't know. All right, hold on a second here. Um, not Jackie Chan. Your music feels like going on a quest. This isn't for you. It's for food, for the friendly creatures you come across. All right. Will do. More black oil sunflower seeds. Um, is what boring to me? I don't know what the... Um, I don't see a context. I'm not sure. My Nightmare. Did I do Nightmare already? Did I do My Nightmare? No, I don't think I did. Okay, so we'll try that one now that I'm... One second here. Octave pedal off. Let's do My Nightmare. I've been to, I've been to Budapest once. Um, if I recall correctly, that was a, a seven-hour drive from... Where was I before that? I forget. Oh no, maybe I maybe I drove from Slovakia, so it wasn't it wasn't so far. But yeah, no, it was a it was a good time. It was it was short lived though. All I got to do was basically like admire the scenery on the way in and out, and then just play and you know go to sleep and leave. So Mr. Larajai, or if the, or, if the, or if the J is supposed to be pronounced with an a, like an H sound, Mr. Larajai, perhaps. There's no story for it, actually, no.
I was playing that, I started thinking about the Marley harmonics, and I went to do that, and I was like, oh, wait a second, it's the other one. It's bringing back to life, did that earlier. Um, and uh, where are you? Okay, that one I can do, time one. Okay, so let's do a mix-up of time one and where are you? Because, I mean, they're similar chord progressions, like I, variations. We could just, we could even say that one is a variation of the other. Do I like Furch guitars? Well, I have one. Um, I prefer the Stonebridge, the older ones. I mean, I prefer Stonebridge myself. Uh, so let's do a mix-up of time one and where are you? And let's go over, there's one other here, level 40, Cameron Anderson. Okay, so here's what I can do with that. Go to my Twitch. Um, I'll, I'm, I'm going to be doing a, I'll practice stream, because another person asked for another song that I don't have ready, which is Feathers and Snow. Level 40, don't really have it ready, so I can do a practice stream on those two on Twitch. But, we'll, you know, over the next couple of weeks, like, you know, next to my, next to my Twitch, I'll pick one song and then work on that you know, in front of people. I'll, I'll just, I show the process of how I'm like, oh, what's that note there? And oh, I forget this part and I'll show how it comes together. Hold on a moment. Mm -hmm. What are the, Mars, what do you think are the best exercises for improving dexterity and the, re and the reluctant ring and pinky fingers? Hmm. Well, it exercises, I don't know. Uh, music that requires their use that's enjoyable to play. That's probably the best answer because you need to have music you'd like to play. Otherwise, if you get stuck in, you know, the uh, ex you know the technical exercise hole, I mean, you might question what you're doing after a while. You might get really good at them, but I mean, the the, the energy that comes from being inspired to play something because you really want to play it because you love it and you want to achieve playing it, that sort of drive is a really good, um, we'll call it, uh, it's... um. It's basically works in your favor to have that at the same time, you know, that sort of inspiration and the uh, and the will the will to do it is kind of amped up by the fact you 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 know you love the music. Oh, that, the word I was looking for was asset. It's a valuable asset. And um, learn, and so your, your question is basically improving dexterity. The best asset for that is music that requires their use and requires the dexterity to play the piece. That in conjunction with the inspiration to play the music, because that's going to give you the energy needed to, you know, it gives you um, drive, it gives you pep. The fact that I love that music, I want to play that. That's the, just you need to find that in the mix. Exercises might be good just for, you know, before you do a show or before you play for someone or record or something. Okay, so, okay, hold on a second, let's roll up here. All right, so let's, so this guy likes time better than time too, so we'll do that with bonus stage, AKA, where are you? Um, do, 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 do. Um, Marcio, what, what age did I start playing? Eight, it was October of 1989, I was eight. I had been eight for one month at that time. If you could only keep one guitar, nylon versus steel, that's a tough one. I kind of like going, I don't know, maybe a nylon, because then I could do finger style stuff and classical, whereas, yeah, that's tough. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Another drink before I start this one. Okay, now did this guy say anything? No, okay, so that was just Eduardo, thank you. Don't see a question there. Tyler ever get a Ewan Dobson tattoo. Well, maybe get a bird or something, I mean, right? Because then if you have my name or my face, that'd get weird after a while. Imagine me, like all for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Think about it. <laughs> I mean, I'd laugh for a little while, but then I'd be like, hmm, was that really necessary? <laughs> And then people like, so who's that guy? I'm like, oh, let me tell you a story. Yeah. And then they'd say, why did you let him do it? All right, so bonus stage, AKA, where are you? And uh, 
time. So let me think here. Which, which should we start off with? Let's start with time and then go to... Where are you? Okay. Hold on, let's hit a tune. Oh yeah, that's the one. Okay, here we go. Let's try that again, shall we?
kind of crossed it with time at the end there, but you get the general idea. It's a similar riff. The uh, what does it go again? Similar thing, but you get the idea. That's a uh, time with uh, where are you? That other last that last with the uh, the similarity in the riffs was throwing me off. <laughs> There you go. That's the proper where are you riff. Now what else we got in the uh, what else we have on the list here? Okay, so we got a couple things coming in here. I'm gonna get a Ewan Dobson tattoo. Yeah, we talked about that. Just remember. Imagine me smiling forever. Every time you go in the mirror, you're like, there I am. Seven Bowles, thank you. Thanks for being what appears to be a pear with a headband. Okay, this is what I'm seeing here. A pear with a headband, looking at itself in the mirror, smiling. No problem. I'm glad I could be a pear looking at itself in the mirror, smiling. With hearts rising above my head. DB47, don't spend it all on bird food. A little support from Finland. Thank you, DB47. Appreciate it. What is this song? Or you just improvised that part? Well, I guess it kind of sounded like I was improvising it because uh, the two riffs are similar. And so um, I was trying to medley them. And then so I, my mind was going back and forth between them because I hadn't played it in a while. But yeah. Okay. Anything else on the list here? So what I think I'll do, I'm going to switch up guitars and we're going to start with some acoustic metal stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the camera and the mic for the, temporarily just while I switch guitars. So, I mean, these, these mic arms here, I mean, you just touch them and it sounds like, like the earth is opening up. So I'm going to spare you, the, spare you the apocalyptic soundtrack and we'll see you in one moment. There we go, I'm ready. One second here. Okay, uh, where did that go? Here you are. So I'm going to apply some GHS fast fret. It just uh, helps me get rid of that, you know, if I have that clammy feeling when you first pick up the guitar after it's been sitting down. It makes it sort of a less clammy sort of feeling. There. Hello, Joe Claudio Pagota from Brazil. What tuning was I in? That was Open C, Benji, Open C. Saw you live in Chicago. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I played there twice at a place called Martyrs, I believe. And then once at, uh, what was that, Something Studio? A place close to Chicago, but I forget the name of it. Oliver, is this a weird looking classical guitar? The other one, perhaps. It might be considered weird looking. Yeah, so Mojo knows how cool the duet and Beyonce is. I'm also getting a, a seven-string nylon multi-act that I'll be checking out. 
Okay, ladies man, I don't, it's a seven string thing. I don't have the, uh, and that's Brandon asking for it. I don't have the, um, the backing track for it. You know, the, uh, it's sort of like three guitar layer thing or two layers. Okay, so acoustic metal time. Cartooly, yeah, no, I haven't played that in a really long time. Um, yeah, and I forget the rest of it, but I can maybe, maybe I could revisit that one. The um, it's written by a composer in Georgia. It's from an opera called Daisy, I think, but I forget the name of the composer. Anyway. I know which one you're talking about there. Haven't played it in long enough. Haven't played it, sorry, haven't played it in a long time. Uh, eight string acoustic. Frank is asking, am I upgrading to eight string, eight string acoustic? Probably not. Seven's more than enough. Like once you get down to like an eight string, it's like, I don't know, too low, I think. Yeah, I, I don't need to do, I don't need to play that low of a pitch okay anything else here um, mm -hmm. okay so let's do I need to warm up on the steel strain now because I did the you know finger style thing and now I have to sort of um, now I have to work to warm up on the steel string so we're gonna start off with perfect eternal <clears throat> Tyler Eckersing autumn red yes that'll happen jolly good all right jolly good let's do it this one in standard tuning, says William. Uh, drop D, close enough. So, um, oh wait, I have to feed the backing tracks from here. So this is Perfect Eternal. Um, these are the backing tracks with my other guitar parts and Zach Bevilacqua on drums. We did acoustic metal one and two in 2013 and 2015. <laughs> Eternal. Um, hold on a second. 
Then we'll do, uh, what was it? Um, autumn red, that's what we're gonna do next. All right, one moment. Autumn red from Acoustic Metal One. <laughs> Cheerio, one, two, three. That does indeed sound, see it says uh, pounds. So cheerio is a very English thing to say. So it does make sense that you would be donating in pounds. Calm birds on one side, acoustic shredding on the other. <laughs> yep. Um, 
Marcio. Yeah, glad you forgot about that for the time being. And uh, what else do we got here? Mm hmm. All right. He slayed the demons earlier, and now you summon them again, says not Jackie Chan. Um, I know your pain too, and I'm not sure if that's ready. But if you go to my Twitch, I'll. That. What is it? Um, I know your pain too. Feathers and Snow, level 40. I have to practice those ones on Twitch. Um, I've got a signed copy of Acoustic Metal in a special spot on my shelf, one of the only CDs I've kept. Oh, cool. <laughs> Winter by the Sea without the other guitar parts in there. Normally it has the harmonies. Just did it without it. Um, I'm going to scroll down here. Hold on a second to scrolling down and checking it out. Spacewalk. Hmm, maybe later. That's um, still got a bit to do here. That was Winter by the Sea. Thank you, Eduardo Abate from Argentina. Hello, hello. Marty Ferguson, how's it going? Um, okay. Someone asked about uh, Warden Woods earlier. I think I can do that one.
Okay, so I'm going to do Warden Woods because someone asked for it earlier. Let me just make sure. Let me just go over the riff. <laughs> Acoustic Metal 2.
one moment here. Oh, that's better. All right, so let me just think here. We'll just try to see how it goes. 24th Caprice. Thank you. 
All right, so that was a flat picking version of the 24th Caprice. I mean, a lot of people like to do the, you know, this part. Because it's actually written an octave higher, so they'll do it with harmonics. It's sort of like that. But I mean, I find to really, it goes up so high that I mean, it's very easy for that part to go off. I prefer just to, um, and have the full volume of the melody. A couple other guys do it the octave lower. That's why I do that particular part that way. Um, reading through here. Do I have an Instagram account? Actually, I do. And I got some bird posts on there and a poster about today. And I got it recently. I actually use, a, uh, I guess, an app through, so you can access it through desktop PC rather than, because I don't have a smartphone. I have like a Blackberry that's just pay as you go and I only use it for, you know, resetting passwords or in case of emergency or whatever. Um, one second here, la la la. Paganini was the original metalhead. Well, I guess to a degree, I'm turning, he was the original, I guess, uh, famous solo instrumentalist that created like a cult following in a in like a phenomen uh, in a phenomenal way um, one second here chilling in a room wait hold on I accidentally scrolled down I'm chilling in a room in Bangkok right now 2 15 a.m. cool Thailand wow Did you consider teaching at some art academy or university? No, I don't think so. I mean, I probably need more qualifications technically to do that. And I'm not sure, yeah, I don't know if they'd have like a Dobson course. I don't know, that'd be weird. Craig Harrison, beautiful playing. Ewan just subscribed to your Twitch channel and got a founder badge. Cool. Thanks very much, Craig. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we're getting some requests for Dr. Wiley. I might be able to check it out. I switch guitars. It might be a bit rocky, but I could do a bit of it. I mean, I pulled it up on on a previous stream. Okay, so let's scroll back down. Uh, you have a BlackBerry, do you? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I don't have the smartphone thing going on. And plus, in my area, the cell phone service isn't very good. Like, in order for me, like, let's say, for example, I'm linking like my Twitch account to Discord or something. Uh, Twitch will, like, you know, I have to get a. A, um, I guess a passcode sent to me and I have to like go take my phone and put it like on the windowsill the upper windowsill so that it reaches the cell service so that's another reason why I don't have the um, the smartphone because I wouldn't be able to use it I'd have to like drive into town and sit there with it you know <laughs> let's try this one I'm feeling this one right now um, here let's just warm up with this one a Paganini Lucas and Autumn movement Need to verify that I let me just go over it quickly.
try it. See how it goes. That's Luca, uh, Luca Sonata number one. I really like the melody in that. And usually there's like a two, it's a two movement thing. So he has like a lyrical slower first movement, usually a dance movement or something for the second. This is Paganini I'm talking about. And usually for the second movement, he, um, he uses a, a folk melody of the, of the region. So an Italian, English or French folk melody. And so I'm gonna do one more. This is Luca Sonata number two. Now let me just be sure of this one here before I begin. And get a drink first. see here about this one. Let's just go over, over the melody. Sonata number two.
And on number two. Now there's this other one here called the English Country Dances with variations that I really like. So I think I'll do that one and then switch it back and start wrapping it up. Um, let me just make sure I got this one. Try this English country dances with variations. Thank you. 
Now I'm going to switch it up and we're going to wrap it up, I think, because I, I, told, uh, I told the fellas at Candy Rat, you know, the channel owner, that I'd be going for, oh, an hour and a half, two hours, and well, here we are at two and a half, so... If you want to see more, I mean, I'm, I have, uh, I'll have i be streaming on my own YouTube channel for, uh, from time to time as well as Twitch. And then Twitch is where I kind of just air out the practice streams, maybe stuff that I uh, haven't played in a while. It's not ready to uh, perform. And so what I do in that case is I just kind of, I pull up the tab, like a similar thing to this stream, and I'll just go through the parts and learn it in front of people. You know what I mean? That way they can kind of hear parts of it they like. But it's hard. I can't bring all of the pieces into performability, you might say. Okay, so let me turn this off uh, te for temporarily, and I'll switch guitars, and we'll wrap it up. Give me one moment. Hold on one second here. Back by a popular request. <laughs> There's the hat. This is the original hat, actually. I had to write on the inside of it that this was the one because uh, I had a couple others. So let me just tune up here. And I told you the story earlier in the stream about how I got this hat. So for those that want to know, you can sort of go through the, uh, the stream and I do tell the story. I'll tell you about this exciting cool new delay pedal I have it's called a TC electronic triple flashback delay and you can uh, you can have three delays at once do I need them no no but I might in fact I'm thinking hold on a second here. I'll give you I'll give you an idea of it here my voice will go my voice will echo though because I have it hooked up to the board, board, board. Hello? Hello? hello this is how it sounds there we go Oh, no, wait, I'm not plugged into the right channel. Much better. There we go. So it's a really pr uh, present sounding delay pedal. Here we go. Let's see if we can get this going.
Slightly extended. Time to? Hold on, let me turn that off. Yeah, there we go. Let's take a look here. Some more comments. To do. Mix Catcom Pete, thanks very much for chipping in. Um, Ronnie. Uh, asks for motion potion that was at the beginning closer to the beginning you can uh, you can find that by scrolling back on the video or the stream rather um, Matt DeMartin five thanks very much man Suta Rooney s 10 thank you All right, I think there's let me, I just need to check out something here on the folder if I have it ready where is it oh here let's try this one this is called surrender i'll do this last one it's from what album is it from i think it's from yeah it's from an album i did called pit of the pit of despair and the joy of the trampoline i just need a different delay setting though this is the only <laughs> the only other song i did with delay so this will the last one i'll do t uh, today and for other requests that I didn't do, just stop by Twitch and then I'll practice some of them in terms of, you know, ones that I don't have performance ready. Like Acousta Metallis, I have a practice stream video of it, but it's not totally um, ready. So on Twitch, I can be more informal about it and be like, oh yeah, let's try this one out, you know? All right, let's, let's try one more. Oh yes, the um, Misanthropin 
the broad uh, the broadcast quality is low because the internet deep in the country in Canada where I live has a very slow upload speed. That's why. Terribly sorry. I even called the phone company or the internet company about it. Like, we're sorry, sir. There's nothing else we can do for you. Here we go. Let's try this one out.
All right. One moment here and I'll just uh, hold on. Very good. So let's see. Yeah, during the beginning of that that last song, I was actually I forgot the chord progression. I was like, hmm, what are we doing here? Uh, and then I went to like a, a dominant seventh chord, but it was supposed to be something else. But I fixed it up on the repeat. Sometimes it happens. So let me just read a couple things here before I uh, sign off. And so here's the thing: uh, requests that weren't and I did I didn't play because I kind of go on a mix between like stuff that I feel comfortable playing and then I'll grab a couple things that I think I can pull off and and then sometimes you know what I'll do other otherwise is just stream it on Twitch and then I'll actually walk you through the whole practice process like you know first part second part I did that with the uh, with Acousta Metallus Plectris I just kind of did a full you know hour and a half of uh of just pl practicing Acousta Metallus pl uh, Plectris as well as uh, Winter by the Sea, and a couple other ones. So just go to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Ewan underscore Dobson, and you can find it in the video description of this live stream. And so I'll be doing more streams on there, and then I can kind of be more informal and kind of like, in order to play songs I haven't played in a while, what I'll do is I'll like play what I know, and then when it gets rusty, I pull up the file and just kind of talk about it and stuff. So that's what I'll do. Jackrabbit, is this a knife? Is this a nightclub? Where am I now? <laughs> yeah. Not Jackie Chan. Thanks for thanks for chipping in again. Appreciate it. Now let me just read a couple here before I uh, sign off. Okay, hold on. Um, what's the name of the song? GV. It's called Surrender. It's from an album that I did in 2016 called The Pit of Despair and the Joy of the Trampoline. And that was when I just got my hands on Fruity Loops and I'm like, oh, let's see what we can work with this and integrate integrate delay pedal guitar into it. And that's what I came up with. Um, streaming here, uh, sorry, scrolling down rather. Uh, Elon Musk said he would be getting high speed internet to rural Canada. Really? Did he actually say that? I had no idea. Does that, does that come with mandatory Neuralink as well? <laughs> I'm just reading through here before I sign off to see if there's anything. Do I plan to go to Hungary? No, nope, I don't plan to, but I would be open to the idea. Um, I would be open to the idea and the opportunity rather. Vegetarian? No, I'm not. No, I'm not a vegetarian. But well, I don't know. just so you know, that's Matt asking. Am I a vegetarian? No. Um, Okay, so I think that's it. I've gone through a bunch of comments. Thanks for coming and hanging out and chilling out here. Um, again, check me out on Twitch. I'll, I'll do random streams and um, go over stuff that I haven't played in a while. Why do Canadians say hoser? Hmm. I don't know. I don't, though. So yeah, it started at two. It's almost five, so that's like three hours. Well, two for me anyway. So I should I should probably sign up because I'm starting to feel like, whew, you know, that little tired feeling where as I'm focusing on what I'm doing, my brain is like splitting in three places. So thanks again. And we will see you again on another stream or on Twitch or on my YouTube channel. But uh, thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, if I didn't do your request, I you know, kind of explained why, but I'll... There's lots of time to do it, right? Because we can't cover it all in one stream. We'll do it in a couple. And plus, since I got the equipment to stream now, and I figured out that I could actually stream with my very limited internet, um, I can make it you know, semi-regular thing. So, yeah, DB47, now eat. I was actually feeling that. Like, when I was playing Time 2, I was feeling like my stomach was doing that thing where it's like, hello, you must pay attention to me now. Thank you, right? <laughs>